Hello everybody, today we'll be looking at a leak code problem where we try to uh, I identify the length of the longest contiguous unique substring for a given string. Um, so let's jump right in. So say we're given this here uh, example string, ABC, ABC, BB. Um, we can see that uh, ABC is a unique substring, but once we get to A, we've seen that before over here. Um, so we can't select this substring. Um, but say we had another substring, um, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, B, B. Um, this would be a uh, three element uh, unique substring. Um, and this would be a four element unique substring. And then this would be another four element unique substring. Um, and so our task is to find the length of the longest contiguous unique substring. Um, so the way I'll be doing this, uh, I'm not super happy with this implementation, but I look forward to getting maybe some better answers from folks in the comments. Um, what I'll first be doing is uh, breaking up all the uh, possible uh, prefixes and suffixes and windows of our uh, substring. Um, so what I'll be doing is um, for, uh, for each natural number uh, <coughs> starting from from one to the length of the string I'll be uh, looking at the whole string as a window so start with starting with length one I'll look at this window this window and this window all the way down um, and then I'll look at a two element window and a two element window just like this and then eventually I'll look at a three element window like this uh, and we'll identify um, the, the longest of those windows where every element is unique. So let's jump right into the BQN interpreter here. Um, so let's start out by defining some of our input. I believe this is what we used before. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is create a, a function to generate all of the windows that we'll be looking at. So if we hop over here to our um, editor, um, start with defining a function like so uh, excuse me um, and that what we will be doing is first taking the string and saving to a temporary variable you'll see why in a minute and then we'll take the uh, length of that value like so uh, and then what we'll be doing is um, applying this function for each element in the, uh, what do I give an example? Um, so if we have our length of, our length of input is going to be eight, this is probably the function we'll be using in there. Um, if we look at all the windows like so, um, this gives us all the lengths of the windows that we'll be using here. And if we use the range operator over our input, say we take, um, uh, using this range function, we can take all of the uh, values for um, input if we take a, a moving window of three elements wide and we scan across the input. And so if we you know, increase this to four elements wide, five elements wide, we want a collection of all of the possible windows over all of inputs. This is all the potential subsequences. And so the way we're going to do that is um, generate all of the uh, possible windows of the string based off of the uh, natural numbers. And we add one so that we don't start at zero, so we avoid getting any empty arrays. Uh, and then what I'll do, we can just run this here. You can see it starts with the uh, smallest windows at the front. I'd rather start with the biggest, just a matter of preference. I don't really have a good reason for that. So I'm going to apply a rotate to the return value. So let's let's see that again. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at. This is all the possible windows starting from the largest all the way down to the smallest. Okay. So what we'd like to do next is um, first identify. Um, all of the, the values within our windows where uh, the substrings are unique. 
So the way we'll go about doing that here, let's just The first thing we'll be doing is uh, performing a uniqueness check uh, over all of the cells of X. So um, for each collection of uh, windows, I'll be performing a uniqueness check. So let's just run that again. Um, you can see for this example, uh, because every letter in uh, input is unique, um, the uh, every single character in the uniqueness check shows up as a, a true value. Um, so if we try this again with our actual input, uh, you'll see that once we get, um, I'm actually going to join this with our input. Should make it a little bit clearer. Um, that's not quite right. I believe this is what we're looking for. There we go. Yeah. So you can see the uh, columns match up with the uniqueness values. So you can see as we go A, B, C, A, um, this second A has obviously been seen for the second time. So at that point, our value is going to be zero. Um, so you can see the longest uh, substring for our string is, is going to be 3 here. Um, but we won't get to that answer until a little bit later. Um, so after we have established the uniqueness values, uh, what we would like to do is um, perform an AND fold over all of those sublists. So for example, we want to figure out if um, somewhere in this window uh, is where all of the values for that window are unique. Um, so we want to reduce all of these values using the logical AND operator. So if any of these values is a zero, or AKA if it's shown up for a second time, uh, then we would like the result of that cell to be zero. Um, so the way we're going to do that is perform another operation for each of the cells. <coughs> Okay, so um, we're going to use this logical AND operator, and we're going to use uh, the insert um, function. So we're going to insert this in between the uh, individual cells. For, forgive me for forgetting this. Uh, I believe it is this guy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the right operator. Uh, and so we're going to apply the AND operation in between each cell of X. So why don't we see what that looks like. Um, okay, so you can see for each, uh, for each row in each cell of our moving windows, we have a value um, indicating um, whether every single value in that row is a 1. So for example, let's take um, the, the first element of the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th um, collection of windows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, that's actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. So you can see that the, the first row of this cell is all 1s, uh, and that corresponds to the first element of uh, this value. Um, and so now what we can do from this point is um, perform an OR reduction so that we know um, which groups of windows gave us uh, fully unique values. So if we, here we can use the opposite of that AND reduction, so we can perform an OR reduction, and here we don't have to apply it in between individual cells, we're not very deeply nested, so we can just apply it directly to X. So let's see what that looks like, okay? beautiful. Uh, and so now uh, you'll notice that um, because of the way we handle our windows, if a smaller window contains fully unique things, um, what I'm getting at is that you'll never have a smaller window that is all zero rows um, 
rather than um, compared to a bigger window that uh, also had a row where it's all ones. Um, which means that in order to get to our solution, we can actually reverse this list and perform a sum reduction on it. So um, what we can do, we can reverse this list, and then we can perform a sum reduction on it. And three is the answer that we were expecting. So let's try this again. I have one more uh, test case here. Um, why don't we wrap this in a function? Um, Let's give it a value. This is going to have to be replaced by x. And now if we take the longest substring and give it an input, we expect 3. Now let's do this again with, um, this is just another test case I had pulled up. This value should also be 3. We should see three and three, and then, for example, if we just put another dummy dummy answer, which we know only has one unique value, we should expect the answer of one, and that's exactly what we uh, that's exactly what we get. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, uh, please leave a comment if you feel like you have a better answer. Um, appreciate you watching. Uh, make sure to join next time. Thanks.